Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the FA 18th seat, late August 2020, and we've had stored heading and IFA added to the alignment options of the Hornet. Stored heading means that we can align much quicker from a cold start, around 90 seconds, rather than around eight minutes for the normal alignment. And the IFA means that we can use GPS EGI to keep our navigation INS system aligned throughout the flight. First, let's look at the stored heading feature. So we're going to do a cold start. We're only going to do the absolute minimum that we need to do. So it's a fresh cold started aircraft. Battery on, of course. APU on. Whoops. Skip forwards until the green light's on. I'm going to crank the right engine. Skip forward until we're about 30%. Uncage the right throttle with the right shift and home. Climb to about 60 plus percent so that we've got the power. For the MFDs, we're gonna turn the DDI on the right on. Might as well do the left as well. Okay, we're at the point in the cold start procedure where we've got enough power just to show this off and do the alignment. So the next thing we would do in the alignment normally is over to this INS knob here, we would go a normal alignment, CV if we are on a ship, and ground if we are on an airfield. So we're on an airfield here and it will work the same in both ways. What we would normally do, go to the HSI, is wait for this time to increase and the quality of the alignment here to count down until we're okay which means that we're ready to fly so if i sped that up that was it they're counting and it would take about eight minutes as of august 2020 no one wants to sit and wait for eight minutes so we're going to speed it up with the new stored heading option here we're just going to click it it's going to start from the beginning and now it's going to take only 90 seconds in total for this to work. So you can see it counting down, it's going to count down to zero or near about and say OK at 90 seconds. Ninety seconds, we're OK, we're fully aligned and ready to go. Now next we would usually put it in nav. That means that we're going to rely solely during the flight on the INS system, the inertial navigation system. Now we've had GPS up there in space added and we can now use IFA in flight alignment. So we no longer want to use NAV. Now when you fly, you want to use IFA. That's the standard what you should have now once the system has aligned. And when you select IFA, what you want to see in the top left of the HSI is pause AINS. I'm not sure what it stands for, but what it means is that it's going to automatically and constantly keep the INS system fully aligned via information from the GPS. As long as we don't lose the GPS, we're never going to see any degradation in the quality of the alignment and navigation will be fine. The old way of doing it in INS, uh, sorry, in NAV, which means just the INS system, we will no longer have the POS AINS, but we will have this in the advisory list P. INS, which means that the navigation system is only being updated by the INS, it's not taking anything from the GPS. And of course, that means that there's going to be degradation over time of your navigation system, it's going to become less and less accurate. So that only leaves us now to look at what happens if there's no GPS up there. First of all, that's going to show you how you can turn the GPS off. There are two ways of doing it. It has to be done in the mission editor here. The first way is that if we grab our aircraft here, our Hornet in this case, and we were to make it red for instead of blue for, we change the country there to, for instance, Russia uh, or Soviet Union, which would be on the red for side. And assuming that unrestricted satnav was not forced on, because you can force it on like that, and override this so if that was turned off like that then you would no longer have GPS and that's simulating the fact that the Soviets the Russians the Red Four the baddies didn't have access to the Western GPS system the second way is we can leave him blue but we could change the date of the mission to before 1986 1986 of course when we had GPS in the West so if we went to say 1945 no GPS anymore so we'll save that and go and see the same thing but with no GPS started the aircraft we're fully aligned so there's no sat nav up there so if we go to IFA we try and use in-flight alignment what we're going to say is it stays as pause INS here the position's only been updated by INS AINS is not available so essentially it's just going to ignore my IFA it's just going to do basic nav and if we go to nav like that it will still say pause INS but it will not give a P INS warning here there's one more thing we'd like to show you and that's during our alignment so if I wanted to realign for instance uh, I'm going to go back to 
to here. We're going to start aligning. Just let that start counting up. There we goes. If we went to, while it was aligning, IFA, and if we see IFA RDR here, that means there's no GPS. And obviously we've proved that because we made it in 1945. But it will keep aligning otherwise. If there was GPS available, it would say IFA GPS. So that's just another syntax that we can remember to see whether GPS is available or not. So that explains stored heading and in-flight alignment use August 2020. I hope that was useful and see you later.